so far we have been approaching uh, the weak cam theory through dynamical system and we haven't really talked about a pd viewpoint uh, therefore i have decided that um, I mean, in a way, we are more or less done with the major contents in Fatih's book. Um, yeah, I think we are quite successful because we haven't uh, had any technical glitches. And, and I think that our format, although it looks a little bit boring, I guess, you know, with, with all the Zoom meetings and overwhelmed amount of time online, um, but on the other hand, I think that with the pre and the post lectures and with everything in good order, um, you know, I think it's it's a good thing for us to go forward. Uh, again, some days if I have time, I might put everything back uh, all together in a PDF file in a, you know, LaTeX it or something. Uh, and also if some of you have a good set of LaTeX, lecture and notes uh, please give it to me but I, I i i don't think it's worth it if you haven't done it uh, it's um yeah i think it's it gives a, a a bit different viewpoint and maybe a bit simpler than than fatis and all the other books available now because uh, because you know we are viewing it from the synthesis of both pd and dynamical system viewpoint and trying to um you know bring the simplest approach whenever possible okay um uh, so i'll go today sort of like looking at the pd viewpoint right and then uh, we're gonna take a few more lectures to do that and uh, uh as i said we are nearly done with uh, i mean we are done with the major contents in Fatih's book there are pieces here and there but um, those should be do I want? There's one more result, one more major result that I will prove to you is the last time behavior result. Um, uh, you know, but but that's for later. Um, that that's a very important result. Um, uh, so PDV point, I'm gonna look into the. You know, this is a bit different with normally if I teach viscosity solution, I'm gonna go throughout the you know, the, the history, I, I will start with the classical method. That is, uh, uh, we will start with, with the classical method. Uh, that is the method of characteristics. So characteristics. And from here we can define local in time solution. And then, uh, and that's it, right? And then, um, um, so this is not enough. And then I will introduce to you the, the, the modern viewpoint that would be um, viscosity solution, but nevertheless, it's very important to know all the viewpoints and connect the bridges because um, all the viewpoints are related to each other. So I will start with <clears throat> with the simplest equation without without spatial dependence. So just this equation. And u x zero equals to g of x on R n. Of course, this is very relevant to the to the um with cam solution already, right? I mean, it's a Lux Olechnik uh, semi-group and stuff like that. That's exactly the Cauchy problem we are talking about here. Stuff uh, typically denoted by the Cauchy problem. And I, I will do the method of characteristics. Um, but uh, let me ask any of you want me to review what's the method of characteristic or I can just assume that what I have on the left panel is fine. Any of you want a very brief overview? Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. that's great. You could talk a little about that. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. So let, let me talk very quickly about that uh, because I mean, like, um, 
this actually you can derive it by yourself and i also forget if i don't do that regularly you know but you know whenever needed i can i can just uh, i can just uh, you know redo it myself and i think it's important if you know it and you can also do it so you start at a point x naught and essentially the method of characteristic tells you that you want to go along a part whatever the part is you would like to go along a part x dt and try to observe the values of u along the part right okay so uh, this this part is to be chosen and then to keep track with with the values along the part you would denote by um, pt the generalized um, momentum by now du x dt and zt you would denote by um, the value of the function along the part right uh, u x dt so those are the those are all the all the things that you would like to keep track with. So it's uh, gonna be uh, keeping track with x, p, and z. Okay, and then again, I mean the part is is of our choice. We can choose it, and then we need to make things in a good way so that uh, things gonna match. Um, so what we do is that uh, uh, you know so. Again, I mean, P is a vector, right? So I can write PI of T is uh, U X I of X T if I want to make it precise, right? And I, let me try to write out uh, OD for P, right? I mean, how does P change? So P I prime of T, just using chain rule, differentiate in T, I have U X I T. And differentiate in X, I have D U X I x t t dot with x prime of t okay so sometimes i'm using prime sometimes i'm using dot is the same thing okay so that's good yeah so i want to find the change of p right it's a, an ode for p uh, what is a problem here is that i have the occurrence of two terms uh the appearance of two terms uh uh U X I T and D U X I. So those are the, you know, second order terms, right? Second order uh, uh, derivative terms, right? And this is problematic because our PD is only first order. I don't have any second order terms popping out. Therefore, I mean, the best case scenario is that we need to get rid of those second order terms, right? So we want to, uh, you know, cancel those out. Uh, okay. So how do I cancel this out? I'm looking back into my into my PDE, right? I have ut plus h of the u equals to zero. I'm gonna to try to manipulate my PDE and have certain common terms popping out and you know cancel things out, right? And naturally, you see, I need to have u x i t and d u x i, right? So to have u x i t, I'm just differentiating in x i this PDE, right? I would have u x i t plus d h of d u dot with d u x i equals zero, okay? Now let me highlight those two terms here. U X I T is exactly the, the top one, this one. D H of D U is exactly this one, right? Uh, so therefore, you know, like in order to match everything, in order to make things cancel out nicely, the natural natural choice for me would be to select X prime of T to be exactly, oh, uh, I think I highlighted the wrong one. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, duxi is this duxi, right? And therefore, a natural choice could be that uh, to match everything together is to match that du with x prime of t, right? So that that leads me to to select. So uh, so naturally, we we choose 
that x prime of t or x dot of t is d h of d u, which is p, right? D u is p t. Okay. And then p prime of t in this case is just going to be zero, right? Because you know, you know, the 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 whole thing equals zero. That's why it cancels out everything nicely. I'll mention the general case. And then if you write out z prime of t, z prime of t is um, z is um, re recall that z t is u x t t, right? So if you compute z prime of t is going to be u t x t t plus d u x t t dot with x prime of t, right? And um, so let's write out our new system of ODE. You would have x prime of t equals to pt is constant. So therefore just this is just the h of p zero, right? So pt just constant p zero and p zero is nothing but the gradient of the initial data at x zero, okay? And z prime of t equals ut is minus of h, right? Uh, so minus of h of pt and pt is p zero. Uh, plus du, du is p, right? And p is p0, p0 dot with x prime of t is just dh of p0. So that's, that leads us to this uh, very nice system of ODE, okay? This is exactly method of characteristic, nothing more than that, you know? And then once you know the principle, you can just, you know, whenever you forget, you can just, you know, redo it. Um, so that's beautiful, okay? Uh, so let me go up here. So that's exactly how we come up with this. Uh, uh, I'm highlighting things on the left panel. That's exactly how we come up with these solutions to the to the ODE system, right? Um, and it tells us that our characteristic is nothing but a straight line, right? A straight ray, you know, going uh, forward. So that's called a forward characteristic. And this helps to define local and time solution. I'll tell you the general case. Um, um, uh, and, and this is good. Uh, a local and time solution is good until that you have characteristic crossing each other. So in this schematic picture I drew here, you see that in the region here between zero and delta, when the characteristic haven't crossed each other, then I can define local and time solution by using the method of characteristics, right? But when the characteristics start crossing each other, then I mean, I, it's problematic because I would don't know how to define my solution, right? I don't know which part of the characteristic to follow, right? I mean, um, uh, for example, when the two, uh, when, when the two uh, characteristics cross each other at this point, right? Then what's gonna be PT, right? Because going along one of the line, it gives me that PT is uh, going along the line from the left. I would have PT is equals to um, DG of let's say X1, X2, right? Uh, so is it equals to DG of X1 or is it equals to DG of X2 going along the right from the, the right, right? And then and then uh, I don't know, and that gonna create certain gradient jumps, right? Because you know the gradients are different, and 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 how do I go forward after that? Do I have to stop there and stuff like that, right? So that that's why method of characteristics. This is a very um, popular methods in the early um, you know 18, 19, 20th centuries, and. Uh, it just helps us to define local and time solutions. And the more of the story is that the local solution is defined uh, until, uh, until the time that the characteristics don't cross, okay? Does it make sense up to this point? Any questions or comments for me? Okay. All right, so let me tell you a, a, a bit about a general setting and then a, a, a remark about a general case and then I'll go back to the simple, simpler setting. So a remark about a general case. 
I, I didn't do the general case because I couldn't write, uh, tell you precisely about the characteristics. So that's why I chose to, in the introduction, I, I chose to do the sim simpler case. It's quite uh, non-conventional, but I think that it's, it, uh, I thought about it a lot and it, it's quite making sense. So if you consider this more general case, then, uh, then your, your characteristic method is gonna be X prime of T, still the same, I'm gonna DP of H of X DP T. I'm not gonna write out Z, okay? Z is, is that. And P prime of T is exactly minus D X of H of X DP T, okay? What is really remarkable is that no matter what we do, right? We're gonna approach the problem from many different ways, but still this is exactly, exactly our Hamiltonian system. So that's why it's really remarkable. You can approach the problem of what, from whatever way you like. It's always giving us exactly the Hamiltonian system, right? From either characteristics or either calculus of variations or you know Lagrangian Hamiltonian framework and stuff like that. So so this tells us that you know everything is consistent. Everything actually connects together. But uh, again, I chose to do the, uh, so this case, this is, uh, this system is not explicit, right? In general, that's why it's hard to, uh, to give you a, uh, you know, good explanation for the introductory lecture. Okay, um, so um, that's good. And this one can even be formalized in a in a in a um, in the theorem as follows. So um, the theorem says that assume that the Hamiltonian and the initial data are C two, and uh, you know initial data is uh, gradient and Hessian is about it. And you can put whatever assumptions you want here, right? You know, it's just it's just a matter of uh, a result. It's not a most uh, the most general result. Uh, so I put such an assumptions and I let capital T to be the supremum of all T greater than zero so that uh, the, 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 uh, the matrix I n plus D times uh, D square of H uh, times D square of G is invertible for all Z in R n. So that is a very strong requirement, right? I'm requiring uh, uh, invertibility for all possible point Z in Rn. But remember that uh, the, the gradient and the Hessian about it. So this is just asking me to check for, you know, uh, for P equals to DG. So, so, so this is, this means that P equals to DG C, right? And then I'd only need to check for P less than equal to C because, uh, the gradient is bounded. So if this is the case, then <clears throat> our hamilton jacobi equation has a unique solution that is in C2 up to time t, okay? Um, this is nothing but just the applications of the, of the inverse of uh, inverse uh, uh, function theorem. So I'm just giving you a quick proof because what I need to show is that if you go along the characteristic. Again, in this case, it's very simple. You're, going, you're just going to define a map, right? So uh, your characteristic now, uh, okay, I'm writing it's XTZ because I start with Z and I want to make a clear dependence on what's the point here, right? So you have XTZ. It's, it's exactly your characteristics, but, but you keep your, your starting point in, 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 the, in the background. I mean, you, you keep track of that. And this would equals to just Z plus T times the H of DZ, right? You start with, with this point. This is exactly uh, the gradient here is P zero is DG Z, okay? Right? And then, you know, 
we have that map and then we're gonna use essentially the inverse uh, function theorem to see whenever it's invertible, right? Because if, in, if it's invertible, meaning that meaning that it's a it's a it's a um, every everything you start with is uh, C one. So if it's invertible, then you can uh, invoke the inverse function theorem to see that your map is a C one uh, diffeomorphisms from that neighborhood down there. You know, like um, from this neighborhood down to this neighborhood. Okay, and uh, and that's exactly that, right? You know, you uh, to to invoke to use the inverse uh, mapping uh, theorem, you just compute the the uh, um, the gradient in Z, right? This is gonna give you a matrix. Difference differentiate in Z, you have the identity matrix, and differentiate in 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 the other terms, you have exactly that. So T uh, D square of H. Uh, multiply with d square of g. And uh, by the assumptions, it's invertible, meaning that our determinant is not zero, right? And when our determinant is not zero, then, uh, you know, characteristic don't cross and you can just use the inverse function theorem to, to conclude that your solution is C2. I'm skipping things here, but uh, that's exactly how it goes. Uh, um, and, 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 Clearly, in this case, so it's just a quick remark is that uh, capital T is greater than zero. Okay, why? Because d square of uh, h uh, acting at p for p bounded uh, multiply d square of g acting at g. Uh, the other one is also bounded, so that gives you a a bounded matrix, right? Bounded um, uh, bounded symmetric matrix. Um, so I mean, if you choose little t to be very small, clearly your 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 um, your matrix i n plus that is invertible. Okay. So with those assumptions, then your capital T is positive. Now, it can be finite, of course, you know. Um, so a quick corollary, corollary is that in certain cases, for example. If H and G are convex, then then your solution is globally defined, and that's that's very easy. You know, it's convex and everything is uh, non-negative definite. Uh, this whole thing is non-negative definite, and then uh, that one is non-negative definite, and and that by that we are done. Okay. Let me pause here for questions or concerns. Anything you would like to discuss? Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm talking about characteristic. Yeah, so I'm gonna give a remark about, um, yeah, after this example. So I'm giving you a bunch of examples now and then I'll give you a remark. You have learned about, uh, about uh, calibrated curves and then in, in the PD language, you know, not many people uh, use it, but I mean, I or, my collaborators, we often call calibrated curves a backward characteristics and all, um, you know, so that's exactly in the same fronts of characteristics here. So characteristics are the one you go forward in time and backward characteristics are the one you go backward in time or oh, make, make a connection. Okay. All right, so <clears throat> uh, example number one, we look at <clears throat> the example in which I have the initial data is p dot x. Okay, um, simple. If that just p dot x, then your gradient is always p, right? Um, so that meant that your characteristics are you know parallel parallel straight rays with all same um, slope p, you know, right? So in such a case, then um, then you can see that, um, what do you see? You see that uh, uh, xt is always equals to um, x0 plus, uh, pt, right, uh, p0t, and p0 is p, right, because 
uh, B U X zero is always equals to P. And then you would have U X D T. If you compute it, it's gonna be uh, giving you exactly um, uh, yeah, I'm lazy. Um, yeah, I'm a little bit. Okay, fine. Uh, so if I if I compute this u x t t, you can use exactly this formula, right? So it's minus h plus p dot with d h, right? Um, so uh, so if you write that, this is exactly. Um, uh, I'm trying to find the easiest way to write this one down without. Uh, so, it, okay. So now I'm writing something wrong. Give me one second. I, I think I messed up somewhere. Uh, no, yes. Yeah, so this is why. Okay. So I have this is x0 plus d h of p, not, not, not p, d h of p dot t, right? And u x t t, if I compute it, uh, it's gonna be just uh, u of x0, 0, which is, um, I started x0, right? So it's just gonna be p dot with x0, um, plus uh, t times uh, just minus h of p, plus p dot with d h of p. Right, I, I wanted to be lazy, but I, I decided to go with that, so I have to finish it. So this means that I have u of x0 plus d h p t t equals to um, p dot with x0, sure, and uh, minus um, p dot with x0 plus t d h of p, I'm combining uh, the this one and this one, right? And minus T H of P, right? So I realized that this one and this one's are exactly the same, right? So this tells me that, uh, it tells me that my solution should be U X T, it's just gonna be P dot X minus T H of P, okay? Right, so, um, that is a natural thing to do. And then again, uh, and you check back, it's exactly the solution, right? You know, in this case, it's a separable solution. This one is in X, this one is in T, everything is separated, right? This gives you that du equals to P and this gives you that um, ut equals to minus HP. And when you combine things together, you're done. Okay? So now let, let, let me say one thing, a remark about, um, about, you know, characteristics are the lines going forward like that, right? You see that it's going forward. So what's the backward characteristic? In the frameworks of PDE, right? So backward characteristic is sort of the same, but essentially you don't start from zero. You start from a point XT. Okay, and you're finding the backward characteristic. So you're trying to find what's gonna be the characteristic that reaching you. So say this one in this example, right? If you go forward, then it's surely forward characteristics. So backward characteristics are just the characteristic that we are tracing back from the point XT down to the initial data. Okay, so this is just, this is a backward characteristic. Okay, it's the same thing, right? For, I mean, they, they represent the same object, the backward and forward characteristics, but forward is the one that I started time zero and I'm, you know, going forward in time. Backward is that I started a point and I'm trying to find characteristics going back. And uh, it's clear that you have seen in the picture that it could be the case that I can find only one, uh, only one backward characteristic starting from a point Okay, it could be the case that I can find uh, maybe two, right? You know, two backward characteristics going from one point because, you know, if you go, if you reverse the time, that means that your forward characteristic gonna co uh, collide with each other at, the, at that point, right? At the point XT, that's natural. This case represents for the so-called gradient jump. 
because uh, you know, uh, if you started, this is a point x1, this is a point x2, as we have said, this one gonna give us here at this point, it's gonna give us uh, dg of x1, right? At this point from here is gonna give us dg of x2. So if there's a difference in the gradient, that meant that there's certain change in the gradient, the jump of gradient. And this tells me that essentially our solution, u cannot be in C1. It at most lifts, you know, that's exactly in the same platform that we have been talking about. Questions? Concerns? Okay. Um, yeah, so now let's let's do quickly the second example. Um, we have a, a quadratic equation, right? I mean, there's no uh, potential energy. There's only, um, there's only kinetic energy here. You know, let's say that we are in a homogeneous media in which potential energy are zero or are constant, or, you know, whatever. Uh, and we assume that G is C2, nice and convex. So this is fit into the framework of convex plus convex, right? I mean, when both um, the Hamilton and the initial data are convex, then I claim that in this case, you know, a, um, the earlier corollary telling us that we can define solution everywhere. Yeah, and you know, you can compute um, uh, what, um, uh, yeah, the good thing is that the H of P is just P, right? I mean, so in this case, exactly the momentum, not the generalized momentum. Um, and you see that then the H of this G is just G prime, right? And you know that G double prime is positive. So G prime is, uh, no, what did they write correctly here? No, this is not correct. Oh. Why did I write this? Um, so G double prime is a post non-negative, right? So this means that X map to G prime of X is uh, non-decreasing, okay? Um, so that means that you, you have the slope, right? The slope is changing. You know, if you go from the left to the right, the slope is changing. It gives you a certain kind of fan, right? It's sort of fanning out. And, 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 and clearly that the characteristic don't cross with, with each other, right? Because starting at a point, um, um, you start at a point X here and you start at a point Z here. This point at Z, the, the slope is less than the slope at X. So, you know, it's sort of, in, in whatever scenario, they're not gonna intersect with each other. And that, that gives you a good way to, um, to see that, you know, you sort of create a good foliations of everything. You see the whole space. Um, yeah, and you write out the formula, you have this one equals to that. So eventually you can write out an implicit formula that you x, plus t g prime of x t equals to g x plus t over two g prime of x square. Okay, this is an implicit formula, but yeah. Okay, so now, um, so that's good again. I mean, uh, uh, so convex plus convex allows us to define solution uh, everywhere. Right, and now I'm selecting another case. This is uh, this is the other the other case that I have convex x plus concave g again. Um, examples, right? Um, I promise that I'll come up with a lot of examples, and uh, and um, yeah. So we still choose the um, uh, the Hamiltonian to be just kinetic energy. Uh, the initial data is kind of weird. We chose it to be minus the length of x, right? So initial data is sort of like this one. Clearly that, you know, what I'm doing, I'm cheating a little bit. G is not C1, right? Fine, you know. Um, so if you choose it that way, then clearly uh, you can see what's gonna happen with your characteristic. Um, your characteristic is gonna be exactly X plus T G prime of X T, right? I mean, normally it should be, uh, your characteristic should be X plus 
t times d h of uh, uh, p which is d g at x right t so this is a general form of the characteristics but first of all we are in 1d n equals to 1 and second of all we have the h of p is just p right um, so again it's exactly the classical momentum um, so this equals to x plus p times g prime of x t in our setting and uh, i purposely chose g in such a way um, that you know g prime is uh, one for x negative right so it's going to be x plus t t for x negative and uh, minus one for x positive okay so that's that's actually a very beautiful picture right because you see instantaneous uh, collisions of the characteristics you start at this point here, you start at this point uh, minus x here. You know, the two characteristics from x and minus x collide at time equals to exactly absolute value of x. So those two collide exactly there. You know, so you have collisions of characteristics, but, but you know, of course for large time it's like that, but you see that for smaller and smaller times it collide quicker, right? And, 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 and you see that they collide for any time. So in, instantaneous collisions. This is not in violations of the earlier theorem because the earlier theorem, I have to assume that G is C2 and nice, right? Um, yeah, so, so if I have instantaneous co collisions of characteristics then how can I define solution, right? You know, I cannot define solution by the method of characteristics. Questions, concerns? Yeah, I throw at you a lot of examples today, but I mean, this is to make up for the very abstract, you know, level of uh, Wickham theory, but you know. And in fact, my view is always that, well, uh, papers sometimes being written in a very abstract forms without clear examples and really deep understanding of what, how things go. Of course, you know, you have top experts who create visions and, you know, there are birds in the field who create vision and stuff like that. Uh, but then, you know, of course, you know, it's, it's great that if you understand and follow certain big programs uh, and, and you create your new values to that, that's amazing. And I would encourage that, you know, I and you guys and all, you know, trying to come up with new examples and, you know, really understanding things deeper, right? Not just, not, not just you know, like, um, and sometimes actually through examples, you can see new phenomena and create new things, you know, new, new programs. Uh, so, you know, sometimes things when they are too abstract with the examples and it's not good. Not always, you know. Okay, so um, I don't remember. I think I copied this example from Evans. Maybe, yeah. Um, so in, in the chapter three of Evans, if I remember it correctly, you take the same uh, PD, right? Um, um, and you start with, uh, this is weird, right? You start with ux0 equals to zero. Okay, so the natural, you know, if you do characteristic or whatever, the natural solution should be uxt always equals to zero, right? That's a natural solution. But it turns out that, you know, if we are not careful, well, I mean, not that if we are not careful, but how to put it, um, You know, we have seen that, you know, characteristic can can cross each other. And at those points, the the gradient is jumping, right? And then we cannot hope for a solution that is C1. So therefore a natural thing to expect is that, yeah, maybe you have solution that is almost everywhere. I mean, nice, except a set of measures zero, right? And um, 
and again i, I again i i, I uh, so so then you know then why not uh, trying to look at oops look at the following function right i mean this is sort of like i would say right away that w w is uh, C one or C infinity except few uh, few rays, okay. Right. So we define a solution W so that is is zero uh, in uh, zero in those two uh, two regions, right? This this is gonna match with exactly the initial data, right? Because because you see that it's it's um, it's good, it's exactly zero there. Okay, now at the initial data level. Um, and then uh, and then in the in the upper top two regions, you choose WXT to be um, um, WXT to be um, minus x minus t on, on, on the left and then w x t to be x minus t on the right. Uh, clearly w is continuous, right? Okay, you see that, you know, at those, uh, at, at those uh, barriers or at those borders, um, w is continuous, right? w is not, uh, is not uh, not uh, not C one at 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 the uh, borders. I mean those the the, the those uh, pre borders, right? This one. It's one of the borders. This one. And there's the other one. Is this one? W is continuous across the border, but it's not C one. Uh, it has the gradient change, of course. Uh, what else I want to say? Yeah, and, and, and it turns out that we can check that W is exactly a solution to the PD, except just those three rays, okay? You can, you can compute, right? You know, um, um, for example, in the regions where you have zero less than X less than T, you compute, you have WT is minus one, WX square is one square, which is zero, right? And in the region, um, that minus t less than x less than one, you compute, you have the same thing. Uh, so so what, I uh, what I meant here is that here, w is a solution to the PDE uh, in, if we are being careful in zero infinity, cross with zero infinity, take away the three rays, so R1, R2, R3. So let me name this one to be, um, those three rays to be R1, R2, R3, okay? So it's a solution except the three rays, right? But you can say, well, I mean, it's still a solution almost everywhere, so can I live with it? Um, but then it's, it's gonna create a problem, right? Because I, I would have two solutions to the problem. One is just zero, the other one is kind of weird, right? <clears throat> And that's something that we need to resolve, right? I mean, something that we need to handle. Okay. So really, how do we rule it out? And how do we say that W is not physical? Okay. And finally, <clears throat> This is an example that, I mean, people often take and it's also in my book. The easiest example that we can describe. I think we also talked a little bit about that. Uh, that if you take uh, the slope is always positive. I mean, the PD tells you that U prime of X is always plus minus one. Okay, if this is the case and there's no C1 solution, you can prove this in two lines, I guess. Um, elementary uh, uh, analysis uh, proof. Uh, so in this case, there's no such a C1 solution like the above example. Uh, 
the best you can do is that you can find solutions that sort of like going down and then going up or going up and then going down or you go in the zigzag way. Whatever, you go in such a way that you always go with slope plus and minus one and you all minus one and then you have the two endpoints fixed with uh, zero value, right? So this is severe. This is harder than the early example. Right? I mean, this early example, you can say, well, you know, zero seems nice. The other uh, solution W seems crazy and then maybe I can just ignore it. Uh, this one is harder because, you know, how did you ignore like infinitely many solutions and how can you select exactly one correct solution out from that? And um, okay, so so that's a that's a that's the way the saying that um, it tells us that uh, the classical theory doesn't give a way to select uh, the uh, one and only one solution to our PD, right? And that we need to introduce in a modern tour and then we're gonna come up with the so-called viscosity solution uh, later. Okay, that's gonna be a content of our next week. Um, again, I'm gonna do it in a very, very uh, minimalistic or uh, uh, yeah, minimalistic way because I don't have time for that, but I'll, I'll, I'll introduce those to you and uh, and you can connect the dots and eventually we, we're gonna see that the the viscosity solutions exactly are the weekend solutions. And then, you know, and then we're gonna uh, uh, deal with last time behavior that's a, uh, last major result i want to give it to you uh, I'll, I'll need to figure out how the time and stuff like that uh, okay questions comments okay great so um you know, again, a lot of examples. Hopefully, you enjoyed it. Uh, even some for some of you who have uh, learned and known viscosity solutions earlier, I encourage you to um, think deeply about the examples. And actually, some of you might also need to come up with examples for your own problems. Uh, so, uh, yeah. And other than that, then have a great weekend. And again, stay safe and healthy as usual. So, see you next week. Thank you.